Hello everyone, GZ here with another uh, Seven Nights 2 video. Uh, so, orbs. Orbs are a new thing that came with the anniversary update. And you can put, you know, you, you can make the base orbs, slap them on a level 40 character, and they've got some enhanced PvP stats. Or, alternatively, you could, you know, sacrifice a plus 20 accessory to one of these orbs to not only gain additional PvP stats, but also it functions as a fourth accessory at that point, you know, and you can put those on your level 50 characters. And then there's the globes, which are just enhanced, you know, level 50 orbs, and you can only put them on level 60 characters. So, <clears throat> considering that the orbs just came out, I thought, oh, why don't I you know, comment uh, what I think would be the best accessories to put into the best kind of orbs. So I went to Tier Maker, and it turns out uh, you can't actually make a Tier Maker tier list without a Twitter account, which I do not have and will not be getting. So we've had to go with Excel. Uh, so what I have here, I have three different uh, books for the three different uh, kinds of orbs, you know, that being attack, defense, and uh, health, and I have organized all uh, 13, right, 13, 3, 6, 9, 12, yeah, all 13 different accessories that you can put into the orbs into, I have organized them based on how good they are inside the orb. So a bit of explanation is S is, you know, the S tier is for accessory types that are essentially the best for the orb. You know, basically, if if you're thinking, oh man, I just made my first, you know, I just I just made my first level forty orb, and I want to, you know, go ahead and make the the level fifty one, you know, which accessory should I should I put in it? That's S tier. That's that's the ones where you're not really questioning. Uh, a tier is for accessories, for accessory types that are good, uh, but they're not really, you know, the best. And uh, B tier is for, you know, you're just, for accessories where you're just doing it for codex at that point. Um, you know, it doesn't really make sense or, you know, whatever. Um, and this is not just for PvP. This is all, I'm also taking into consideration PvE. Uh, you know, m namely the guild raids with the dragons. So, you know, we've, uh, now that that explanation's out of the way, we're going to start with the attack orbs. So, actually, before I start, a little disclaimer. In for all three kinds of orbs, attack, defense, and HP, I have put immortality, revive, and imperishable in S tier. Those three are up there. Those three are, I believe, so good for any any orb. Um, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, you know a lot of tutorials and whatnot recommend that you farm up a certain number of immortality and revive accessories, and you know, use them. So if you if you've been following that advice, you have numerous copies of these accessories that you can you know potentially you know get to plus twenty if they're not already and put them into orbs. The reason why I put imperishable here, despite its rarity, is because it you know, it basically it's it's immortality, but it has a slightly different effect. But it's still immortality. So those three S tier all the way. <clears throat> anyway, now that that's out of the way, we can finally start truly. So, Mirage is in S tier primarily for PvP reasons. Um, you know, Mirage dispels any disabling status effects, so, you know, things like shock, knockdown, all that, and it gives you, you know, damage immunity. This is great for your attacking units. <laughs> Because if they get hit by an AoE that bestows a status effect, you know, I'm, th I'm thinking of Fodina, you know, then this will help, you know, clear that off and get rid of that. Uh, Destiny and uh, Superman are here, are both in S tier for the same reason. They're damage steroids. Now they do that, in a, now these two do, you know, increase your damage in a different way, but it's still an overall damage increase, and thus it just makes sense to put it in you know the top tier for you know an attack orb all right so now we've moved on to a tier so first you know I, these aren't in any particular order i just kind of slapped them you know where i thought they went you know with no consideration for order so just because 
full moon is, you know, right here closer to A, it doesn't mean that it's any less or any more or less good in an attack orb than time acceleration. All right, I forgot to put that disclaimer out there. I don't do tier lists that way. But um, full moon. So full moon is here in A tier simply because everything in S tier is better. That ends you really you really full moon really i don't think sees a lot of use um in gr or gw or arena so it's kind of you know just here in a i mean it's a good it's an it's a solid choice but it's not the best choice uh moving on we've got uh time reversal now time reversal is a tricky set to advocate for because it requ you know if you really want to get you know, the, the best effect out of it, you need a three-piece, which, I mean, duh, you need a three-piece for all of them to get, you know, the best effect. But time excel time reversal is a special case because of, ha of what it does. And what it does is it removes buffs and inflicts debuffs. And, I mean, a two-piece is acceptable. You know, you've got a 25% chance per attack. You put it on a fast attacker and, you know, the law of, the law of probability kind of weighs that out um but when you're you know if and these are also really somewhat difficult to get uh you know they're available in all field expos but you know you've i mean it's got the same it's got the same drop chance as the others i wouldn't be surprised if it was less so it's not the best choice um for your attackers simply because you know again there's there's better choices that and you really you're not really going to be inflicting, you know, you're not really going to be inflicting a debuff this way. You're going to just be using character skills or just sheer damage in some case. So, I mean, again, it's a good choice, but it's not the best choice. <laughs> All right, so we have transcending. So transcending is a good choice. Um, you know, more, you know, more, you know, you're, you're put on your fast attacker, more ults, more damage. Easy, easy. It's... Re if I if I was doing this for specific characters, transcending in an attack orb would be absolutely monstrous on certain characters. I'm thinking I'm thinking Ming Teo. I could I could see an argument for since his ult resets his cooldowns. You know, those two in those two in particular come to mind. Um, but it's not good for every character. Just it's not the same level of good for every character across PvP and PvE. Um, I don't even really see a lot of use for it in uh, PvE, um, except for uh, with Shay, with the uh, the dragons. Uh, you know, trans you'll get a three-piece transcending on Shay for the dragons. You're gonna be, she's gonna be ulting constantly and everybody else is basically going to be ulting constantly. Um, again, it's not the best choice, uh, especially not for an attack orb. Uh, but it is a, it's still a good choice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next is Lethargy. So Lethargy, Lethargy I think is just mid-tier in general. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, if, you're, if your opponent can't ult, then they, you know, then that's, that's a big, you know, damage fall off for them. But my counter to that is that Ming gear exists. And the two-piece effect for main gear is that when your ult is at 100%, it cannot go down. And you really need a lot of leth. If you're gonna if you're gonna run leth, you need a lot of it in order to actually you know manage to you know kind of completely suppress the uh, the opponent. Uh, and it also has no use in gr. So that's that's why it's a tier uh, for orbs at least. You know, uh, time excel. Time excel is. Time Excel is so much better for supports. It's good for your DPS units, your damagers, because it's good for your damagers because, you know, more skills equals more damage and the possibility for more status effects, but the other, you know, the, the S tier pieces are just better. Now, this is, now Time Excel is so good in GR for, you know, for your supports. I mean, it's basically best in slot. So, it's A tier for your attackers. And now finally B tier. So Indomitable. You know, reduced damage taken, 
increase alt gauge. The second half of that is good for your attackers, but the first half of that is basically tank shit. So it doesn't really make sense for your attackers, especially since, you know, unless you're putting them in the front line and then auto-targeting will do its thing, where it's like attack frontline heroes. But really, everything in the tiers above is better than Indomitable for one reason or another. Now, Mother Nature... Uh, Mother Nature is kind of niche because you can either you can either put it on your tanks to you know shackle and knock back the enemy, or you can put it on your backline to do the same thing. But in the case of your backline, which is most likely going to be you know an attacker or a support, uh, for the attacker. Everything else is just a better option, and you, you know, for your attackers, you really want to kind of maximize their damage, especially for those double tank teams that are so hard to crack. So, you know, it's, yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense to put it on, uh, you know, to put it on for your attackers. Anyway, so these are the accessories for attackers. Let's now move on to the defense people, and this segment should be a lot shorter. So, uh, S tier, uh, I've already explained, you know, the first three, so we're just going to skip over them. Mirage is just really good in, in Arena for NGR, or, yeah, NGW for everybody. It's just really good. Like, if, you're, if, you're, if your tank is up, then they can use their skills. If they're not taking damage, that means they last longer. All right, that's just how it is. Let me take a sip here. Okay. Now, Indomitable. Indomitable is basically the made-for-tanks L-plus accessory. And to that end, if you're putting in a defensive orb, which is most likely going on a tank of some kind, Indomitable is just, you know, aside from Immortality and Revive, it's basically best in slot. Uh, transcending. So, Transcending is good for tanks. Um, I mean, it's not as good as Indomitable. It's basically just... You know, it's basically just, you know, you know, discount indomitable. It's not really, but essentially, because it's just, you know, the more your tank attacks, the more ult they get. It's, you know, it's, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's not the best, but it's passable. Um, Leth, Leth is also, you know, A tier, but your tanks aren't really going to be responsible for, uh, you know, taking down... Uh, you know, the enemy's alt gauge. I mean, you could do that if you're running a double tank setup. You could have one tank be kind of a debuff tank and one just be a straight up, you know, whatever. You know, but, mm, you know, f a, a lot of people I think would just go for like a double, a double, you know, a double full tank with Indom. Um, and again, you know, doesn't work on the dragons. Uh, I realize I'm talking mostly about PvP, but, I mean, that's what the orbs are mostly made for, so that's mostly what I'm going to be speaking about. At least, you know, for the rest, you know, I, you know so, so far and for the rest of this. Um, time reversal. Again, your tanks aren't really going to be your debuffers, because I think most double tank teams are built with just two mega tanks, you know, and then maybe the, maybe the attacker is the debuffer, but... You know, you're really not going to be putting time reversal on your tanks. I could see where it could work. You know, soften them up for your attacker with a debuff tank. Whatever. Now, time excel. Again, attacks leading to more skills. That's good. And tanks, tanks have, you know, defensive skills. You know, big Rudy's got his, you know, shield and reflect. Uh, you know, red Rudy's got his link. Um... You know, I mean, you know, you could even consider Karma a tank. You know, his, his you know, barrier that he casts at the beginning or his instant teleport, you know, that that works too. Um, you know, just, you know, Jave, his shield comes up more. You know, it's it's okay. But again, most people, I think, are going to go with Indom, just in general. Uh, and finally... Down here to B tier, lots of stuff in lots of stuff in B tier compared to attack. So, full moon, your tanks aren't really damage dealers, so the full the spread of full moon damage isn't really going to do much. Uh, Mother nature, 
Uh, you know what? Actually, let me move Mother Nature right here. Because uh, I think I think Mother Nature would be good, but not the best. I mean, it's you need uh, it's the same thing with kind of time reversal, where you need a lot of it to really get you know a, an acceptable level of effect. Uh, and so, if you were to you know put that in an orb and you know put it on your tank, then I mean you know a shackled enemy and a knockback enemy can't you know aren't necessarily doing damage, which makes your tanks last a little bit longer. But, you know, it's just not, it's, it's really just not as good as Indom. Uh, you know, mo I, think, I think the benchmark for comparison here is, is it as good as Indom? You know, uh, Superman and Destiny, they're damage steroids. Not for tanks, basically. Not for, you know, this is, this is you know, not for tanks. You know, these are d damage, you know, this is a debuff, so not for tanks basically all right so you know that's and this so this is what i this is what i've surmised for basically tanks and you know i guess karma because you know he's kind of a tank but anyway finally the hp and this is where gr comes into play because there's not really a lot of supports in pvp unless it's you know a double tank setup or the like so this i'm mostly going to be talking about GR. So, uh, naturally, you know, top three, duh. Uh, Leth, Leth, Le uh, not Leth, uh, Mirage. Mirage, you know, this is probably going to be where I talk about PvP. Um, Mirage, I mean, it's just good in PvP. So, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty high tier. So, next, Transcending. So, this one, this one just, you know, I said this earlier, you put a three-piece transcending on your blue Shay and go into GR, she's going to be basically ulting constantly if she's at level 60, and as a result, the red, the entire team is going to be ulting constantly. Big, big damage potential in GR. That's really, that's really the biggest, you know, advertisement that I could put for transcending is put it on Shay, get big damage in GR. Now, Time Excel, again, with GR, you're going to have a healer in every single one of your GR teams. Time Excel is best in slot, in slot for them, because more heals, meaning you can more quickly counter damage. Or in the case of, like, a buff healer like Kagura, that her buffs cool down, her buffs, you know, are, you know, cool down faster, meaning more uptime, meaning more damage. All right, A... You know what? Leth is an A tier. It if this was just a GR kind of standpoint, Leth would be in B tier because Leth doesn't work on the dragons. But it's an A tier because of its applications for PvP, which I have gone over before, and it kind of makes sense to put it on your supports. Oh, it's kind of a little bit, but again, you know the bench the benchmark for PvP uh, usefulness for these accessories is Time Excel. If it's not as good as Time Excel, it's below Time Excel. So, Time Reversal. Time Reversal works on the dragons. Uh, you know, the blue dragon buffs himself right before he does, you know, Land of Thunder. This can take that, you know, this set can take that away. I have a three piece on my Chris. You know, I mean, I realize he's not a support, but if you were to put it on a support, it works on the dragons. So, you know, it's, it's good, but. Again, it's not as good as Time Excel. Uh, Mother Nature, Mother Nature is good for supports. You know, your supports are, you know, they're not they're not tanky like the tanks. You know, I mean, yeah, they can heal themselves, yeah, they can buff, but they're not, you know, they're they're a bit more fragile. So putting this on like your backline healer, you know, a two or three piece on your backline healer to, uh, you know, get get you know, just kind of delay a backline assassin, good stuff. You know, not not as good as other options, but good stuff. Uh, Indom, Indom, you know, works for for supports. In Indom works on everybody, really. As long as they're taking damage, Indom works. It's just not the best uh, because you know your healers aren't supposed to be taking damage, and if they are, that means you need to kind of move them around a little bit more. Uh, you know, transcending is just better for them. You know, in this case, transcending is better than Indom 
for healers. Uh, since most of the time your healers is you know going to be at the back, just throwing attacks out to build ult, and Indom doesn't work if they're not taking damage. So, A. Uh, and finally, uh, B tier. These are you know these are damage steroids. Your healers aren't supposed to be dealing damage. I mean, yeah, Full Moon does have a debuff attached to it, but Time Excel is just better for that, or Time Reversal is just better for that. So. Damage steroids, not good for healers, which are generally going to be getting these HP orbs. Um, anyway, so, right, that's uh, that's what I've got. You know, those, these, I mean, these are just, these aren't like the hard facts. These are just, you know, my own thoughts on everything. So, you know, if you disagree, go ahead and leave a comment. I, you know, you know, if, if there's something I, you know, didn't consider, you know, it's highly probable that there is. So go ahead and, you know, let me know down below. And, uh, you know, until then, you know, happy hunting making orbs. <laughs> you know, I'm doing the same thing. Until then, later.